Hi everyone, welcome back to Ontology Explained. Here we're doing the third installment of Terms You Need to Know. So we covered RDF, we covered RDFS. Now let's look at what you need to know if you want to build an ontology using OWL. A lot more things to cover in this one as well. There are several must-haves. OWL class, we talked about this a little bit with RDFS class. OWL class is just a more semantics enforced and exactly what those enforced semantics are isn't super important for you at this point. It might be a good thing for you to go back and read more on after you've played around with a little bit, but just suffice to say that classes and individuals need to be distinct in OWL and think of classes as your basic building blocks, your sets, your collections of things that all of your individuals are gonna be instances of. So in our Ninja Turtles example, Donatello is an instance of a Ninja Turtle. Ninja Turtle is gonna be an OWL class for us. Then we have our properties, object properties and data type properties. And we covered this in a previous video. I'll make sure to link that below, but object properties relate to individuals to each other, right? So like Donatello um, uh, is wearing his mask because his mask and Donatello are both individuals. That's an object property. Data type properties connect individuals to some literal. So like a string or a date or a decimal, something like that. Then we have owl thing. Owl thing is the most generic class in the owl class hierarchy. Everything is an instance of thing. You know, the computer is a thing. Uh, uh, Donatello is an instance of thing. Every owl class should be a subclass of owl thing. You don't even have to explicitly state it. It's just provided. This is your most generic top level class. And then lastly, owl disjoint with. That's our way of saying that two classes are totally distinct from one another. There's no overlap between them. This might be really important when you want to talk about, you know, okay, physical objects and events, like they're different things. No event is a physical object. No physical object is an event. So I'm going to say those two things are disjoint. And let's go ahead with that and jump on over to our examples so we can see how these are cached out. Here's our turtle file with the Ninja Turtles that we're talking about. And we're going to see how does owl class, object property, data type property, thing and disjoint with, how do they show up? And we've actually already seen a few of these. I've been maybe a little fast and loose on some of the previous videos. I've referenced owl class before. Ninja turtle is an owl class, right? And turtle is an owl class and person is an owl class. And because all of these things are owl classes, all of them are gonna sit somewhere underneath the most generic owl class, which is owl thing. And so we could say for a person, if this is sort of the highest one up in our hierarchy, we could say RDFS subclass of owl thing. And that just makes it explicit that this is very high up in our class taxonomy. It sits just below the very top level class. As a matter of course, I rarely make this sort of assertion. I might wanna put something else in between person and thing, maybe agent sits up there above it. And you don't get any real extra mileage from making that assertion explicit. So it's probably not worth doing if only for just not making your turtle files any longer. Okay, let's go ahead and scroll down. And we've used some properties in the last video as well. We talked about relationships uh, that can hold between our Ninja Turtles and their weapons or their masks, right? And so we had the touches property, the uses weapon property, and the wears property, all to express these sorts of physical relationships. And each of those are object properties. They're connecting a given Ninja Turtle or a given person to something that they're wearing. And so we assert that wears is an owl object property, same for uses weapon, same for touches. And what this does is it allows us not only to use domain and range to say what type of things the subject and object are, but it also makes it explicit that the subject and object have to be named individuals. They have to be individuals. Okay, but we have object properties, but I haven't yet put any data type properties. And so I threw one in here. So let's say we wanna relate the Ninja Turtles to their birthdays. And we can say that Leonardo has birthday 1984, May 5th, 1984. Uh, and just so you know, dear viewers, I really put in the effort here. Apparently that is the original conception or like the first release of something with Ninja Turtles. So that's as close as I can get, you know, in my, uh, my hard Google sleuthing to find out when the turtles were actually born. If you know what their birth date is, go ahead and drop it down in the comments. I'd appreciate learning that. Uh, so this is a data type property has birthday because it's connecting us from an individual to a literal. This is the RDFS literal that I referenced in the nice to knows in the previous video. 
So when I declare the has birthday property, I say it's an owl data type property. And now I still have a domain, right? I still say, okay, it relates a living thing, which means Leonardo must be a living thing if he's got a birthday. But I also wanna put a range on it. In this case, the range isn't gonna be a class in the sense of like, you know, a uh, you don't have a birthday and like that's a physical object or something like that. It's not a class we've developed. It's gonna be some data type. So almost always we're gonna use something from the XSD hierarchy here. You can create your own data types, but that gets a little more complicated. Don't do that to start with, make use of XSD. I'll have another video coming up for the XSD data types that are most typical and most frequently used. And then there's one more thing that we haven't covered from the OWL must-haves. Uh, that is the disjoint with property. So I gave an example earlier, but let's suppose that we want to be really careful because, you know, look, wears and uses weapon are both sub properties of touches. And instead of sticking with making sure that we distinguish those, maybe we can say, but clothing and weapons, those are totally different things. There's no piece of clothing that is also a weapon. It has to be one or the other. I'm not sure if that's actually true. Um, it's probably not true, right? Like some sort of spiked helmet or whatever. Lots of shredders gear seems both like clothing and weapons, but just entertain me for this one moment we can say that weapon is owl disjoint with clothing. And disjoint with is incredibly powerful for inference because once we know something is a weapon, if weapon is disjoint with clothing, then we can prove that that thing is not clothing. And this can be really helpful for uh, uh, narrowing down the search space. We wanna prove things, uh, looking, looking for certain things that satisfy conditions, et cetera. Okay. In addition to the must-haves, there are a lot of almost must-haves, and I'm just gonna briefly read down these, but what they do is they allow us to be more particular about the types of properties we have. So we saw data type and we saw object properties, but among the object properties, we might wanna be able to say something even more particular about them. So uh, I'll come back to annotation property in just a second, but we can say that properties are symmetric asymmetric, transitive, reflexive, irreflexive, or functional. All of these types of properties are things you might be familiar with from mathematics. So a, refle a reflexive property is something that everything bears back to itself. So if we had a property that was like being the same height as, everything is the same height as itself, so that would be a reflexive property. A symmetric property is one where if it stands in the relation to the other object, that second object stands back in that relationship to the first object. And hopefully you can figure it out for transitive and so on. Consult your math texts and Google if you want any more details there. Again, this hopefully should be clear. That's going to be really useful for doing inference. These are almost must-haves because I think they make your ontologies more complete and more usable. They are great. But in your first time building an ontology, don't worry too much about it. Then we have the annotation properties. Uh, annotation properties are, think of them as meta properties. They're things that are not data type or object properties, so in a sense, they're just everything else. But their real intention is that the annotation properties are ones that allow uh, the ontologist to make some comments to other readers of the ontology about how the ontology is functioning. And then the very last piece there is our top object property. I forgot to capitalize that last P, my apologies. Uh, what the top object property is, is that sort of for properties, that's the analog of owl thing in the class hierarchy. So every property, every object property you create is a sub property of top object property. And just like owl thing, I almost never assert that a particular property is a sub property of owl top object property. That's just a given. Um, but unlike owl thing, I often just declare that something is an owl thing if I don't yet have a more specific class. It's probably a bad sign I should make a more specific class, but I sometimes use it. I don't know that I've ever really typed owl top object property into one of my turtle files. That would be super rare for me, but it's nice to know that that thing exists. Okay, a bunch of nice to knows. These things are pretty much all gonna fall into the category of you definitely want to know this, but give yourself a month if you're just sort of picking up the vocabulary. We'll have other videos about how to use each of these, I'm betting, uh, so stay tuned, like, and subscribe. But if you're just building your first ontology now, it's nice enough just to know that they exist and come back for these later. So there are OWL restrictions. 
which is a basically a way to build owl classes based on how uh, properties are used. So I could define tricycles as all three-wheeled bicycles, right? Then we have owl same as. That's a way to connect two individuals and say that they refer to the same thing. So I could create Superman and Clark Kent and say that they're the same. Equivalent class is same as but for classes. An equivalent property is same as but for properties. So if we have different things that do the same work or refer to the same concept, we can connect them with these equivalencies. Uh, and that helps us bridge together different ontologies or um, allow you to have different modes of presentation for the same terms. Different from is just your opposite, your inverse of same as. We can declare that two things definitely don't refer to the same individual. And this is important when you think about OWL making the uh, open world assumption. I've got another video on that. I'll drop it down below. Uh, but saying that two things are different um, or saying that two things are the same gives us the vocabulary to say that, uh, okay, definitely this person is not the same thing as this person. They're not just different names for the same thing. And once you know that, that licenses some new inferences. And then last but not least, we have union of and intersection of. This allows us to build new classes by taking the intersection or union of existing classes. Okay, that is a ton of terms. This will take you a while. Uh, maybe you'll need to rewatch the video. If certain things were unclear or you want some follow-up on something, feel free to drop them down in the comments. I want to make as many materials as will help people learn how to use ontologies. But now you've got a lot of terms at your, expo at your disposal. If you only have those terms that I covered in these last three videos to work with, you can get a very long way. I think the only missing piece I would say are knowing some more of the XSD data types so that we can make some data type properties. And that's what's up next. So I'll do a quick video on that and then off to the races. See you next time.